Hello, everybody. Welcome back. No, you are not lost. I am celebrating Halloween at Christmas time. I got my Halloween slash Christmas pajamas. I tend to not celebrate Christmas, and it's not anything necessarily religious. I just don't celebrate it because I'm usually alone. Nine times out of ten, I am alone on Christmas. And my husband, he works in healthcare, and it's not like people take the holidays off when they get sick or injured, so he must work. And then when it comes to my family, I have the family that I really wish that I was with, either living in other states or countries, and the ones that are here in New York. Um, I have always loved Halloween ever since I was a little kid. That Halloween feeling always had like the same majesty and wonder that Christmas had for a lot of kids. And it had that for me as well when I was a little kid. But I remember getting more excited for Halloween than I did Christmas time. There's a lot of things that I remember about Halloween when I was a kid versus now. And there's a lot of differences in both people and I guess the environment, you can say. Firstly, if you've ever seen the movie E.T. and you remember when it was Halloween and all of the kids are in the street trick-or-treating, it just looked like almost a parade, but it was just kids trick-or-treating in costume, that's what it was like. It was genuinely like that. Streets were packed with kids, all in costume, all trick-or-treating, and sometimes the parents let their kids just go alone. It was um, fiery times back then. And it was like that up until I want to say 95, 96, which is when I finally hung my trick or treat bag up for the very last time because I started going to Halloween events and um, in the goth scene. You don't really see that much anymore. You don't see kids out trick or treating, not anywhere near like the way that they used to. And I wonder when it fully stopped or when it started to change because I can even check my ring cam on Halloween to see what kids come up to take candy and barely anyone shows up and I have so much candy left over. I always buy a lot just in case, and I end up with so much candy left over. And another thing I remember, which is also, I would say, atmospheric, is the fact that, no, environmental rather, not atmospheric, environmental, is that it was much colder when I was younger. And this, again, went straight up into my teens, maybe early 2000s, that you had to wear a jacket because it was freezing during Halloween. And I remember as the night would go on, it would progress with being out and trick-or-treating, I would hate to have to put my jacket on and cover up my costume, but it would get so cold that my teeth would be chattering and my mother would be like, put your jacket on. And I didn't want to cover my costume. But it got to the point where I was nearly hypothermic before I would have to put my jacket on. And this went on up until at least high school. My birthday is early October and my birthday, you could see your breath, it was cold. But that's another thing that's changed. It's not as cold as it once was. So there are definitely differences between then and now. And the Halloween costumes back then were very primitive but hilarious. And the ones that you would buy from the store, the pre-packaged ones, with those plastic masks, I swear every time I see pictures of those plastic masks, I can smell them. And I remember immediately your face started sweating underneath the mask and breathing wise, it was like funneling air through a straw. But in the end, it toughened us up. So I did some vlogging this year for Halloween. And as much as I love Halloween and I love Halloween vlogging, a lot of people asked me why I didn't. And I actually did, but I didn't post any of it. And the reason that I didn't post any of it is because I got wildly discouraged at just the Halloween season in general when it came to shopping, because it was my favorite thing to do. But it became so consumerist based that it really sucked the magic out of it. You know, when you finally see the Halloween things in the store and the displays and the music, it's just, it hits you and you're like, yes, this is amazing. But it wasn't like that because firstly, they, they put the stuff out in June and by then you already had resellers picking it clean because it got to the point where it wasn't necessarily something for people like us who love Halloween to find really high quality pieces because that's the one consumer's part that I think is pro is that there's so many things and there are now these new competing brands that make incredibly high quality stuff that isn't that chintzy stuff that you get at like five and below or Dollar Tree or something. These are things that are built to last. So you get these really beautiful, well thought out pieces for Halloween and they can stay out year long if you wanted them to because they're made to withstand. But the downside to that is that they come out seasonally, therefore it's kind of first come first serve, which ushers in the resellers. And I saw a lot of them in the stores. So the stuff came out in June, stuff was getting picked clean. And I remember seeing women pushing around carts 
in uh, not Joanne's but Home Goods, pushing around carts in Home Goods, packing things into their carts, taking pictures of things in their cart, and it just ruined it because you have all these people instead of enjoying it or allowing other people to enjoy it, they're looking at it as a way to just cash in and profit from it. I can understand the side hustle. I understand inflation and I know what it's like to live on your own and really have to hustle to make ends meet. I get that. But going through during Halloween and seeing these women, multiple, branded from head to toe, I'm talking like Prada, Louis Vuitton, Balenciaga, you name it, like just branded from head to toe and they're filling up their carts with all of these Halloween goods, but instead of grabbing one of something, they're grabbing every last copy of that thing, leaving none for anybody else. It left me very discouraged because I think it's something that's kind of been picking up in the last few years because a lot of these things are limited edition. So they don't make the same things every year. Every year it's a different theme for Halloween and it's fun to kind of go in and look at and see what the new theme is, what they're kind of going with. I remember last year it was very... Um, Kind of witch in the woods apothecary and this year it seemed very throwback to the 1950s halloween you know bright orange with the old graphics and everything was really interesting and really cute for what i did get to see but like i said a lot of stuff was really picked apart and picked clean and part of the halloween season for me is getting to go into the stores and seeing it all kitted out for halloween playing the spooky music smells like cinnamon and spice and you're walking through and they have all the great decor and it just kind of sucked a lot of that joy and majesty out of it, seeing people doing the whole reselling thing and the shelves being kind of bare of what they used to have. Every time I go through my folders, I see all of the Halloween vlog footage that I took and I had like a last minute idea to just post it on Christmas because I thought it would be funny. I also did Blaze, which is a Halloween jack-o'-lantern walkthrough, which was held at Old Bethpage Restoration Village, which is a site that I really love. It's an old historic site that kind of comes along with its own general creepiness. So I think that having that as the atmosphere is very, very fitting. And it's just a really beautiful walkthrough. I vlogged a little bit of it because it's something that I look forward to every year and I really like to experience it. And it's very hard to experience the things when you're vlogging them because you're more watching them rather than experiencing. So I wanted to get enough so you can get a really good idea of what it's like and still be able to experience it myself. But again, since I didn't post anything else that was really Halloween related, that just also sat in my folder. So at the end of the whole vlogging portion, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you all of the things that we picked up for Halloween this year. And my husband's gonna be so happy because they've been sitting in the box. And I said, we can't take anything out yet because I need to do a show and tell and show everybody. And it just feels wrong to take everything and put it out without showing you. So I'm going to get to showing you at the end of the video. I wasn't gonna actually vlog doing any of the like Halloween hauls this year because they've been putting things out earlier and earlier every year and this year they started in, in June and the stores really get picked clean by the resellers who will go on Macari and put them up for like three four times the price and better hope I don't find you but I, I'm in home goods and I figured there's some really nice things and I thought my might as well take you around and let's get some stuff I have more to show you because, like I said, things have been picked clean. Ah! Come to me. I like this. Even though it's, as the kids say, blingy. I don't mind it. I like it. It's uh, more faceted jet beads we see here and some pearls. It's not quite sequins, which I like because I hate sequins. A little mosaic bat. Fred and Stella. This one's nice too. 
I don't mind you. We like you. But I'm really looking for things to kind of put into the house. And I will say, things like this, things like this, they make me happy. They're, I think as time goes on, you know, as the years go on, I get older and I'm getting more, I'm kind of moving away from the more like, I am queen of darkness and more cute and quirky and spooky. And mind you, I still have that sort of wanting to live in the big gothic tower surrounded by antiques and creaky stairs and loaded bookcases that smell of dust. But at the same time, I can't help but smile at this kind of thing too. You know? And I think there becomes a point in our life where we just kind of start going backwards and thinking about our childhood and maybe try to reclaim that youth a little bit. Not the youth of like our teen years or our 20s or whatever more. The years when you were a child and maybe years that maybe you feel like you could have enjoyed a bit more or maybe you'd taken for granted and you want to do it all over again. That being said, there's no reason why you can't do it now. The theme really seems to be a lot of Dio de los Muertos, but there's a lot of vintage Halloween, like the 1950s. Uh, a lot of kind of, I, I, I kind of want to say Hollywood Regency, maybe some 1930s feels. It's very, it's very mishmash, but I say this every year, the orange is growing on me. It's Howard Jones. You might not hear it because I might put music over this, but it's Howard Jones playing. Oh, there's a little kid laughing. I wonder what they're looking at. I want to see now. <laughs> I feel like somebody just told him a very salacious rumor and he's trying to keep it to himself. We like it. You keep those secrets, skeleton cookie jar. You keep those secrets. We need one of these. So if you've never seen one of these before, you know when you're cooking, let's say like the pasta sauce or whatever, you need something to rest the dirty spoon on instead of your dirty counter or dirtying up your counter. And that's this guy or that guy. Yeah, I feel like we need one of these. This matches the mug I already have. So I feel like this one and it's a $4.99. Yes, you can keep my kitchen counters clean. This year there's a budget, which I think is more than fair. $100, cannot exceed $100. And it doesn't have to necessarily be in this store, it's just kind of in general for the entire Halloween season. And that's fair, because we don't want to go overboard like I have done in the past. And it's always good to be frugal. Let's be frugal. But let's look at stuff. So here we have... I like the nice sequence. I like that. Uh, what's the price though? 
There's no price on it. Yes, oh wait, where it is? Five bucks. Five dollars. It's not bad. So five dollars, not bad. Let me just put on my do my fucking contact here. And then there's this. Mr. and Mrs. Let me see. I mean, they are very cute. They're a good size bowl for other things because we don't have really bowls that size. We have kind of bigger and smaller. Not quite the middle bit. Mm. They're about the same sense. size as the white ones that I got. That I like. Oh, okay. Then we don't need them. We shall leave. How much are they? Um, like 13 bucks. 13 bucks. They make good yogurt bowls. Yeah, that's true. If, I, if we got them, I'd replace the black and red ones that are chipped with them. I say then do that. Let me just move this. Yeah. That I thought was cute, the Mr. and Mrs. Bathroom, bathroom stuff? Yes. Kitchenware is my weakness. Kitchen things, things for cooking, baking, entertaining, that kind of thing. I love plates, dishes. Um, I think they're even sort of uh, pumpkin Dutch ovens. <laughs> This is what I was referring to when I said like Dutch ovens and things. I have potty humor, so whenever I say Dutch oven, I laugh. But check it out. Little jack-o'-lantern for brie. I don't know about you, but I can only eat brie without the brie skin, because brie skin to me, when you have the rind on it, it tastes like ammonia. And I gag. I can't do it. I cannot do brie skin. Some people can. Some people eat it. As is. And... I got to give them props. Because I can't do it. So just because, I'm going to show you the pillows, even though I kind of, I can't get them as much as I might like them, because our home is fairly pillow-tastic at the moment. Um, and I'm sure there was probably a lot more at some point, but again, like I said, they started this in June. So. Not Halloween, but Taylor's is actually a really good tea, which you don't really find a lot of in the States, so I'm going to grab some of these. Let's do some Earl Grey. The thing about home goods is that everything is really spread out. There's not one designated Halloween section, so you really have to walk around. Like, look, I'm in sort of like the bath and shower section, and here we have But there's a bunch of these things around. There's uh, foaming body scrub, pumpkin spice latte scented. I have uh, behind me their Halloween themed shower curtains. So everything is just, it's all the same quality that you would expect, but just, just Halloween. Everything is treated the same way as everything else. It's not cheap party supplies that you would find at like, um, you know, like Party City or something like that. So as it turns out, Stuart has had that tea before and he said it's no different than the twining, so it's been put back and all I have is this lonesome little, what do we call it, ladle slash saucer thingy to keep your countertops clean from dirty spoons as you're cooking. All lonely in the cart. Right, we have some towel options here. 
Those are cute. It's just I feel like they're more decorative because their little tool skirts get in the way. Well, true. Also, they're, they're white, which means they'll get dirty. Oh yeah, they're a second. I like these because they're textured. I feel like they have more. They feel like spa towels to me because spa towels have that texture to them. Maybe we should do a line in, in goth Halloween home spas. Don't tempt me. So we've decided on a soap dispenser because it is a two-part system here. We both have to agree, but... So we needed towels. They look blue, but they're black. Okay, our cart is starting to resemble something. All of the Halloween stuff at Joann's is currently 70% off, and it's, it's like happy and sad at the same time because all of the Christmas stuff is out right now and it's depressing and I don't want the season to be over, but 70% off is always a good thing because that is like super duper savings and I love being frugal and I love budgeting and I'm gonna see what I can find. All of these things are 70% off, which makes these $9. These are decently sized boxes and as you can see, decent storage and what I like about it is that when you have like little things that you need to sort of organize in your house, you just have a lot of different things, random stuff and they're just, they are out and they look unsightly and untidy. But if we organize them into these boxes, little does anyone know there's chaos inside. But on the outside, pretty neat and contained. So we have this one. And then we have this one, which inside, other things we're getting. We have some oven mitts. And then another little box. I think we're going to use that for tea. And this is a project I'm working on. I brought that with me because I need to find something that's going to strip that paint off of it and other stuff. So we came in here for kind of a paint stripper and this card so I can fix the picture frame. But now we can bake Halloween cakes. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. Some and have Halloween mead. And Halloween mead. Black light bulbs. Lots of different things. But again, everything's 70% off, so can't really go wrong with that. So we kind of estimate roughly like fifty to sixty dollars worth of stuff. But what do you think it'll come out to? Sixty, maybe a splash more. With or without the discount? What? No, no. Without the discount, it's like three hundred bucks. Now. No, yeah. two hundred. Two hundred. Hmm. We like savings. 80, 90, yeah, somewhere close to. But there's also going to be a lot of turnover, which means just because we're getting this doesn't necessarily mean we're going to like kind of crowd it in to like our apartment with everything else. No, that means there's going to be stuff that's going to be leaving as well, like yeah. donation and stuff like that. And we keep stuff in pretty good condition to where it's not going to be a problem. You know, we could donate it and people can still get like decent things. Not like it's been through hell and back. The exception of our very much maligned cooking mitt, which has been that's to hell and donated. back. That's not getting donated. That, no. The, the cooking mitt has we'll give it a proper burial. ceased to be. This is a great jack-o'-lantern blaze held at Old Bethpage Restoration Village. I came to Old Bethpage during its usual function a few times on school field trips in elementary school, and then I came back again when I had family visiting from England fairly recently. All of the buildings, the general store, school, house, homes, are all original colonial homes with the history intact and staff waiting inside, in period clothing and in character, to tell you all about it, answer your questions about its inhabitants, the period, the things inside the home. The buildings are filled with original furnishings, beds, kitchen materials, and old smell. As a child, there was something very ominous about this place to me. It was nothing like the 80s Formica, exaggerated pastel fake floral arrangements and angular vases, brightly colored seashell-shaped bathroom soaps, plush carpeted bathrooms, and linoleum flooring. I think I found it so creepy because of how the homes were older than the oldest people that I'd known and yet exactly as the families had left them, but they were long gone. I was standing in a space that they were born, raised their families, and died in, and I swear I could feel eyes on me. I can still feel it there till this day, but nowadays it's not scary to me. Which is why I find it utilized in this setting so fitting, 
yet magically comforting, even after I caught a weird voice that I cannot explain at last year's blaze. I can't remember. I can't remember if I got these last year or if I picked these up this year, but they're tea towels. Tea towels, always very useful. I love storage containers because they're incredibly useful to have around because Sometimes you just have like little bits and pieces just hanging around that doesn't have any real place for. But if you contain it in something like this, you have the chaos concealed in here and it looks nice, sat out. So I'm gonna try to be organized with what I put inside. I don't wanna get messy. Oh, I think I left, I think I left it in the kitchen. So if you were watching during the vlogging portion, you saw that I picked this up. It's been in use, it's been in my kitchen, and I've used it many a time, and it has kept my counters clean. So you put your dirty spoons on when you're cooking things like sauces or soups and you're stirring things, it's really useful. And I got it because it matched the mug that I got last year. I really like this. I'm using this for storage at the moment because I need to allocate the things inside. So, from the video. Inside, Black Moon Cosmetics sent me a ton of stuff, which I'm forever eternally grateful for, and I'm gonna be continually posting makeup looks for them, because they're Genuinely my favorite makeup company when it comes to like pigments and things. When it comes to things like foundations, I tend to use makeup from Korea and Japan because I like uh, skincare that's combined with things like foundation. So whenever you see like a foundation on my skin, it looks very shiny. That's because it is, uh, I use either Kojendo or I use Misha, which combine the, the hydrating effects of various skincare ingredients such as hyaluronic acid, ceramides, and you combine it with your, um, your foundation. So if it's gonna sit on your face, it may as well be doing something beneficial. So it's also very light, which is what I also like. So I don't like makeup that feels heavy or cakey. That sidebar side, I'm very happy that I'm gonna be able to you know, use these boxes now. I'm gonna organize my makeup a little bit better. And here we have Home Sweet Haunted Home. This spider web, so the inside is all spider web and spiders, but this spider web here is actually paper. And I got this for a project, um, which I just dropped. This was given to me by a friend and they gave it to me with the intention of knowing that I'm gonna edit the crap out of this. So it's just a picture of Gomez and Morticia Adams that was put inside like a normie mom frame with like love and this, and it's cute and everything, but, um, the love and the bow and arrow with the heart of gotta go as the background here, which is kind of this textured gray. So what I'm gonna do is that spider web is going to replace the textured gray and I'm gonna scrape the love in this out. I'm probably gonna put acetone inside, let it sit, and hopefully it will get the rest of this off and paint the frame black, very simple. Sure, you remember this one from the video. I'm excited to finally be able to use this. And I, once this video is done, I'm gonna be filling this with soap and I'm putting this in my bathroom. These I'm very excited about. I might use these either tonight or tomorrow. So they are, they're little cake tins. So they're backwards here, but if you look here, I do have a lot of canned pumpkin left, but I feel like it's like pumpkin overkill at this point, and I haven't really done anything gingerbread. 
and I have a ton of black strap molasses as well as black treacle. So I wanted to also try like a Jamaican ginger cake and put that in here. That could be interesting. On the confection trail, we have these, the uh, Cakesicle Mold Set. I swear, once I finally have a child, I, we are gonna have the best fun just baking and cooking and making the craziest things. So speaking of baking, since my husband has to work the holidays as well as his compatriots, everybody has to be away from their families. I always bake for them every year just to kind of brighten their spirits a little bit. Uh, last year was Cinnabons, and then this year I did um, all my vegetarian and vegan community. Please avert your ears and eyes. I do apologize. I'm going to show you in a second. I have a couple left over, uh, the smaller ones. The other ones were huge that he brought. But I made chocolate cupcakes with a chocolate mousse icing. And then inside is a bacon maple caramel and then topped with candied bacon. One sec, I'll show you. I want to cut it in half so you can see the caramel on the inside, but I don't want to ruin it in case anybody wants it. I think they're black with red undertone. Lights. Very cool. Another thing, aha, here it is, under my thermos. Ugh. Get out. For when we have people over. So these are mini cookie stamps. When you do sugar style cookies, the one that you roll out and you press. So you can just press it down and go boop. I got these and you'll notice that two are missing because I made cookies with them, but these are cookie cutters. As you can see, we have a planchette. You have a crystal ball. You have a potions bottle and a cauldron. So I use the cauldron and the potions bottle. The potion bottles made lavender cookies and then this one was the rose and i think i think that's it i think that's all of the things that i got unless you just think of what oh mm. i also picked up this and this is by this is by an independent artist i got this for my husband we still need to frame this and inside I also picked up a couple of other things from the artist. And this one's really cute, look, with a cup of cocoa. And this is from Rico's Corner LLC. I'll put all of her information in my description bar, so if you want to see any of her work, you can check it out. I hope you enjoyed my haul this year. I didn't go as extravagant as I used to. I set myself a budget, but that doesn't mean that I didn't get some really awesome stuff. I'm happy with what I got, and I'm also really happy that they're going to be into commission once again because I started shopping a little bit earlier too because, like I said, they put things out in... Um, they put it out in June. So a lot of these things have been sat here since July. So now they're finally going to be able to like be taken out of the box, be put into use, and we can see them in their glory outside in our environment, which once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you had a great holiday and until next time. Bye.